أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر أما بعد قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا فاتتك الحياة فاصنع ما شئت الحمد لله respected listeners all praises are due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى we send salutations upon the beloved of Allah سبحانه وتعالى اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم respected listeners the topic that we have chosen for today and inshallah we will cover this aspect of premarital conversations and preparations over a few weeks inshallah and the reason that the inspiration came to uh, speak about this topic is that unfortunately not only in uh, this few years but we have been witnessing over the past years the increasing rate of divorce amongst newlyweds, amongst young couples, amongst elderly couples, sometimes couples that have been married for 20 to 30 years or so. And it's not only that the divorce rate is amongst couples that have just got married uh, for six months or seven months. And the question that needs to be asked is, if so many beautiful things, and it starts off on such a beautiful note, that sometimes when you look at the preparations of the nikah itself, beautiful flowers, amazing venue, so much of people, families coming together, you know, the food is also good. But then we ask ourselves, Sometimes, unfortunately, one brother said that at one of the nikahs, he had uh, taken a photo of the, uh, the, 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 the groom and some of his friends. And after a week or two, he wanted to give him the photos to show him how beautiful the photos had come out, only to find out that uh, the brother already had gotten divorced. Now, these are incidents which are not of ancient but current incidents that you hear. Sometimes a nikah, after three months, the nikah is broken. So respected listeners, the question is, can something be done? Is there a mode of rescuing? And yes, the answer is that if we look, even in the kitabs of fiqh, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the ulama bring forward one of the chapters which is called Kitab al Kufu, the book on compatibility. And many a times we understood compatibility as it only means that you look at which race or compatibility in wealth and compatibility in, 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 in ethnicity. But this compatibility is what they have put together in today's time also, that premarital preparations and conversations. And as we go into the lecture series, we will find out just how important it is to mentally prepare our sons and our daughters and also for couples to go through these questions which have been prepared in order for us to know that we have chosen the right partner and also to how to rectify and better ourselves if we are already married. That's why one person, one motivational speaker, who had put together these questions, he said that what motivated him was that he noticed that after a couple is married, it is so difficult to save them from a divorce. But before they get married, if we do this routine, then inshallah it will minimize the risk of getting a divorce. Because we then know that this is what I want. This is what I want. This is the partner that I want to be with. This is my decision. Yes, we have understood each other. We are on the same page. Not after 
We say nakahtuha wa kabiltuha and now everything is sealed. Now to turn back, that is a very difficult road. What I have done, respected listeners, is we start from the very beginning. And the first question is that how do we approach somebody who we want to perform nikah with? And if we look in the books of Hadith, it is unanimity of the scholars, they are on a unanimous decision that it is permissible for the person to go and have a look at the girl he wants to get married to. We find the hadith which is mentioned in Abu Dawud of Jabir radiallahu ta'ala an, where he said that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that if you go and propose to a certain family, then first of all have a look at the face of the girl that you want to get married to. Why? Because this will increase and it will erase all doubts uh, if you want to go through with us and to know that this is the person that I want. In fact, one of the Sahaba, al mughira bin Shu'aba, he makes mention and he said, Khatab to Imra'atan, that I proposed to one of the, uh, 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 a woman, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked me, that, Anadarta ilayha, did you, did you have a look at her? Qultu la. He said, I did not have no look. Nabi sallallahu said, Qala fan dur ilayha. He commanded him, go back and have a look at her. Why? Because sometimes there could be certain features or certain things which you do not like and now you didn't see and now when you get married, it's not what you want. So sometimes you know it's similar to when you buy things from the internet and it comes short and sometimes they show you a nice t-shirt and you order it and when it comes it's extra small and you are double XL. Now you have a problem, you're sitting with something that you do not want. This is Samala. It is better to have a look at what you want and look at, and, and, and say that this is what I want. So this is the first step. Unanimous uh, 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 agreement by the scholars that it is permissible. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts guidelines. And the, 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 the girl should only expose those parts which we, 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 which show her beauty, which is the face, and some ulama have mentioned the hands, and in the Hanafi madhab, some of the ulama have mentioned the feet also. That is sufficient for a person to know that if this is the person that he wants to marry or not. <clears throat> and that is why uh, it is made mention that these are the first steps. Secondly, respected listeners, now a person has looked at the person that he wants to uh, get married to, the families have agreed, and now preparations begin. This is where we need to start taking care of certain boundaries of Sharia. Sometimes we become too comfortable after that. And how do we become comfortable? The second stage is that Imam Zaylai mentions that there is a hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Shaykh Waliullah Muhaddith al-Dahlawi mentions this in his 40 hadith and in fact it is mentioned by Abu Dawud also that لَا يَخْلُوَنَّ رَجُلٌ بِإِمْرَأَةٍ فَإِنَّ ثَالِثَهُمَا الشَّيْطَانِ After this, up until the nikah, sometimes we blame the parents also. We become so relaxed, yeah, they are already married men, they are halfway there. Let them go and have coffee, let them go out together. Let them spend time together. Respected listeners, the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are strict on these two that are going to get married. If you want to cause a disaster, if you want to cause that marriage to start off on a wrong note, then let them be secluded with each other. This is totally forbidden by the Sharia. Even if they want to discuss issues of the marriage, issues of the venue, there should always be an adult who is constantly watching what they are doing and what they are discussing. Today's time we have WhatsApp, Instagram. We say, let them, let them chat. No problem. Respected listeners, there's no chatting except that if they want to chat, if they want to discuss, 
let them make a group and add an elder on that group. Add somebody as, as an elder. If the boy is really true in his intentions and his heart is pure, then why do we need to be scared? If we are going to be discussing issues of the marriage and that, why should we be scared to have an adult who will be monitoring the page? Only when we want to discuss things which is disobedient and immoral, and remember that this extracts the blessing and the barakah of our nikah. So respect and listeners, we should not become too comfortable, especially for parents, when the decision of nikah has been made. Number two, many a times when these discussions happen, and I'll mention the reason why. Today we have a lot of youth here. Let them listen to this very carefully. This is especially for the youth. You know when somebody has proposed, now the heart begins to work and the brain stops. And they call this here the stage of حُبُّكَ شَيْئَ يُعْمِي وَيُسِّمْ That sometimes in this stage here you become, they call it blind, your love makes you to become blind and deaf. And the person that you see, the boy, mashallah, is a very, when, when he's speaking to the girl, very softly spoken, very respectful. Even if the girl has to say to him, uh, we're meeting with the family today at 2 o'clock, he'll say, no, I'll be there at 1 o'clock, don't worry. Or I'll come 12 o'clock, I'll wait outside the house so traffic doesn't get me. He's on time. The, everybody looks uh, well-dressed. Everybody is wearing their best clothes, their best of character. You know? And all of these things, respected listeners, is a delusion before, uh, uh, before the nikah. This is the first stage. And that is why the stage lasts up to even after the nikah is performed. For that first month, we still do not know the person that we are married to. That is why Sayyidina Ali, in, in, in uh, some of the ulama have mentioned that this is from Sayyidina Ali. He makes mention and he says that what is nikah? Nuzumu mahrin. First you give over the, 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 the dowry. Wasururu shahrin. And a person is happy for a month. وَأُمُومُ دَهْرٍ And then after that is where the real second stage begins. The second stage of nikah. Many a times we first, we, we, are, we were running through only the first stage of nikah. And unfortunately it is the picture which is drawn today for the youth. It is told to them that when you get married, this is the end. Your, your jannah begins. Your paradise begins. You have completed. You are, you are complete now. Whereas the reality is that have we explained and sat down with our children, with our daughters and our sons, and explained to them the second stage. And what is the second stage? The second stage is, this is where it comes in, the premarital preparation and conversation. That is why, respected listeners, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention that in this time when a person is still single and when you have prepared to get married and both of you are still single, things that we need to take care of. Ya amanu la khutuwati shaitan. Up until your nikah, O oh people of Iman, be careful of the footsteps and the vices of shaitan. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu qu anfusakum. O people of Iman, protect yourselves. Make sure that you are what you are before the nikah. Don't give a wrong concept or exaggerate about your character. And that is why, respected listeners, it is very important that we understand the importance of implementing these premarital preparations and conversations. It is one of the biggest decisions when we give our daughter over to someone or when we give our son over to someone. It is the biggest commitment in life. It is the biggest choice in life. And after that then, if we have done it correctly, then we have passed the way 
for our children to get to Jannah. We have passed the way for a good a progeny and offspring. And that is why it is made mention that we should keep this in mind also. Whether we are single or whether we have made intention to perform nikah, but in that stage when we are engaged and not yet married, listen to this verse here. وَلَقَدْ جِئْتُمُونَا فُرَادَا كَمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةً this hadith, this verse of the Qur'an, Imam Qurtubi mentions it in his tafsir and he brings a hadith which is mentioned in the mustadrak of Imam Hakim. He says that Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, when she read this verse, she said to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that how will it be that people on the day of Qiyamah they will be bare and they will come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will be bare and alone. And they will come as they are created because everybody will be naked. But the theme of this verse also is that everybody will be resurrected alone. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that everybody will be drowned in their own stress and worry that you won't even look to the next person. But know this respected listeners that whether we are single or whether you have proposed to a girl, all of your actions leading up to the nikah, you will be questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on their actions. And that is why when we have made this decision, it is very important that we purify our intentions and that it is really what we want. And that is why we made mention that the importance of premarital uh, conversations and preparations. Imam Zayla, he beautifully mentions, and these are things that sometimes we so relax as the parents, we begin to prepare for the wedding. So, uh, one of the psychologists, Jordan Peterson, uh, in, his, in his book, he wrote that one of the greatest stresses and depression that people go through is sometimes the parents who are preparing for the nikah. The venue, the food, the clothes, is the food right? Will it be nice? All of this we are stressing for. But have we stressed on is my son ready to get married? Is my son performing his five times salah? Is my son reading his Quran? Does my son have a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is my son respectful? Does my son know how to, 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 to apologize? Have we been as parents a role model to our children? Has our children seen that when I argue with their mother, how I speak to her? Have we implemented these values and characteristics into our children? And how sometimes we know as parents that our son or our daughter is not prepared for this marriage, but we say that let him get married, He'll, inshallah it will, it will all, it will all, uh, all those broken characteristics and that will get sorted out. And that is why, respected listeners, you find that even in the, 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 the Christian churches or the rabbis, they have implemented that it is not allowed, especially in today's time, it is not allowed for a couple, a young couple, to get married unless they go through these questions of premarital preparation and conversations. And inshallah, in the, the, the khutbah that we will be doing next week, we will see how pertinent and important it is to pose these questions. And then we will see that is this person ready to perform his nikah or not. And just on an uh, ending note, it is made mention that one of the things that we the thing of nikah is that sometimes the aunties and uncles will tell you that being single you are incomplete. And completion is when the two souls meet. Then the everlasting fairy tale begins. Unfortunately, due to social media and technology, we are taught since the time you were little, every story, every song, every movie, every ad, is that you are deficient when you are single and everything that was once broken will be fixed. The only problem is that 
after marriage, these the honeymoon months, then only this is where the building starts. And we will end off with this here, the building of what? Now the Nikai, the venue is finished, the one day event is done. You with your wife, go go on a honeymoon and you know on a nice time. And now when you return, this is reality. What is reality? This is where the building starts of your life, of your character, of your sabbath, of your patience, of your perseverance, your sacrifice, your selflessness, your love, the building of your path back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why, respected listeners, inshallah next week we will continue with some of the pertinent questions and thus inshallah if we follow this routine especially in today's time where the rate of divorce is unbelievable if we follow this routine of asking these questions it will inshallah minimize the risk of divorce and it will also give a good mindset to the boy and the girl that is this really the person that they want to spend their entire life with May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to implement these actions and also to safeguard all of our marriages and for those that are intending to get married, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them that their marriages last uh, for forever inshallah.